Good day for our friends, second project of the day here. And a special one for me, this one, because uh, this guitar belongs to a friend of mine who I met at the HFC, the Hamer Fan Club, uh, of which we've both been members for many years. I think I've been a member there, over 10 years, whatever. Hamer's my favourite guitars when I discovered them in the 80s. I could never afford one, didn't get one till the noughties. I've had a couple. I had, uh, I had a Centura in 1991, which I bought from one of the guys from Bruce at... Uh, at the HFC and I bought, I also managed to cop hold of a 1988 uh, California, or California, absolutely brilliant guitar. I had to sell it when I needed money at one time, uh, just the nature of the way things are in today's climate, well it was quite a few years ago, but anyway, this guy I met, he's known as Linksman on uh, the Hamer Fan Club page, uh, his name's Dave, and uh, we've kept in contact, we've met up a couple of times, and uh, he's bought me a guitar to set up for him. And I'm going to show you the guitar, it's a beautiful looking thing. Nice Floyd Rose on there. And it's an Ibanez. And it's an Ibanez model number EGEN8. Don't know what that means, don't really care. But anyway, Floyd Rose, Ibanez stamp on there. HSH pickup, five way selector. Probably got, oh it's got a split core split on there, not an auto split, a push split. Right, that's okay, that's cool. So that's nice. Anyway. There's not necessarily a problem with this guitar, it's just Dave has said he's never quite gelled with it. He says that it's not set up right. He says, so let me do my magic on it and give it a complete setup, which while the Floyd Rose for starters is sunk into the body, so that's not right. We'll get that floating. Shouldn't be like that, should not be like that. So we'll set that floating anyway. Uh, I am going to do full bit on this. I'm going to check the frets for level. We'll go across with the fret rocker. Once we have established that the neck is straight, uh, by going across with a notched straight edge, blah, blah, blah. Basically what I'm going to do to this is going to be a strip and a rebuild from the bottom up. So I'll check all the tuners, I'll check all the screws on the tuners, the nuts and bolts on the tuners. Everything that can be checked on there will be checked. Um, if I do need to do a fret level, I will remove the neck and we'll get it all on my uh, jig, which is behind me, which is basically my version of a Stumac neck jig. Uh, it's functional, it works fine for what I need it for. I'll check all of the electrics, obviously check all the frets. Uh, any frets that need levelling and recrowding will be done. Any more than five frets, I include five frets in an intensive setup. Any more than five frets, can't do them by hand, I'll have to do them on the jig. So it will go, the price will go up, it will be a complete fret level with a setup, which is a little bit more expensive. Uh, can't avoid that because it is time consuming. If I do a complete fret level with a complete setup, you're looking at four, five, six hours depending on the guitar. It's got Floyd Rose on there, which I normally charge extra for, for, extra for setting up. I'm not gonna charge Dave extra because he's a friend. So I've already given him a price on this guitar, which we've agreed to, which he is more than happy with. So basically what I'm gonna do is, the most important part of any setup for me is checking that the neck is straight or if the neck isn't straight, that the truss rod works and we can get it straight. Once we determine that the neck is a good neck, then the job's worth doing. I will go no further if the neck is no good, because there's no point, because if the neck is not right, the guitar is never going to be right. You must get the neck right. After the neck is right, then it has to be the fret. So this is why I started Fret Friend. I'm all about frets and necks. But once we've determined that the neck is okay, we can get to work on the frets, then we can go and do the rest of the setup. Uh, that's what it's all about. So pretty plain sailing, straightforward. Hopefully it doesn't need a fret level. It means I can get this done in two and a half, two and a half hours maybe, maybe a little bit more because it's got Floyd Rose. Uh, but I will set everything correct on the Floyd Rose. I'll make sure the intonation's right. Where we can, we shouldn't need to change the radius. It should be a 12 inch radius anyway. I'm thinking because this is an Ibanez, it's probably gonna be a flatter radius of 14 or 16 inch. I would think a 16, but I'm just going to test for a 14 because that seems like what it should be in my mind. So let's have a look there. Uh, it's flatter than a 14, it is a 16, I believe, man. Some radius gauges here, understring radius gauge, blah, 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 blah. There you go. I would think it's probably going to be a 16 there. I'm just thinking when I get this under there correctly. Okay, we are a 16 inch radius. Gonna whiz it down there then, make sure it's not a compound radius, which it isn't. We do have a 16 inch radius. Right, that's fine. 
always found a little bit weird if you have a 16 inch radius on your fingerboard then you use a 12 inch radius Floyd Rose. I'm just going to check radius of Floyd Rose. Mm. Yeah, the radius of a Floyd Rose is sharper. A bit more of a radius on the Floyd than there is on the um, neck. I don't like that. I like the strings, each string to be the same, more or less the same distance from the frets on each one. Probably a little bit closer on the higher strings. But anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We'll get it all sorted out. I'm going to go with a new set of uh, strings on this. I stock Ernie Ball regular slinkies 1046. I also stock Ernie Ball uh, super slinkies, which are the 942s. And I have a set of Deodario 1046s, XL110s, are they? Whatever they are. So he has a choice of strings. Could go with a 9. Uh, I've not decided yet. I'll measure these, see what these are, and I'll go with the same one. Pickups, don't know what they are. We've got hex pole pieces on the screw coil for slugs, or just bare slugs. We're going to be a pretty decent pickup. Ibanez make fantastic pickups. I actually really, really like the, the Infinity pickups. I've always liked them. So if I could pick up the guitar with Infinity pickups in it, something like the RG350 DX or something like that, cheap, I probably would buy one if I see one come up in the future. So, I'm going to crack on with this. You'll see the fingerboard needs a little bit of work. This will all get treated. We'll mineral oil, fingerboard, clean it all up, get rid of all that gunk. We'll polish. Once we level what frets need leveling, we'll give it, get them all polished up. Um, and everything else will be done, as I said, very thin guitar body, that. It's probably what I don't like about it. It's probably why Dave don't like it. Dave's a big bloke. He like, he's like me. He likes heavy guitars. I love a heavy guitar. I'm all for a full-weighted Gibson Les Paul type of me, especially the older studios, fantastic guitars. Anyway, I'm going to crack on with this, so less chit-chat. Let's get cracking. I'll be back soon. So, quick update. I've removed the cover plates at the back. Um, eight screws on the control plate, and I'll show you why. It's because of the body. is up flat, it arcs over, so we need four extra screws in to bend, basically bend this round. Blah, 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 like so. Uh, and I'll show you, and I'm glad the electrics are alright, because uh, it's a bit congested in there. They have the PCB type push-pull pot in there. Not a lot of room. I wouldn't want to be tinkering about too much with that. Also talk about, but I do like to see this. I set my tremolos like this. I have my springs horizontal like so. I don't set them in a V shape or an A shape, whatever shape you want to call it. What I'm going to do is, I've loosened the locking nut. I'm going to set the tremolo first. And once I've set the tremolo, then I'm going to check the intonation. I like to do that with the old strings on, because I'm going to put the same gauge on. If I get the intonation everything set with the old strings on, chances are I'm going to put the new strings on and everything, because I'll change. I won't do them one by one, like especially on Floyd Rose. I'll do it absolutely from scratch. I will strip everything. And I'll be putting a brand new set of strings on anyway. But as long as we get the, we're using the same gauge string, we should be able to get the intonation set, and it'll be absolutely fine when we put the new strings on. It saves me having to do it again later. So I'm going to tune this to pitch, get the tremolo where it needs to be. I'll get it floating properly and um, I'll come back and let you know how that goes and then we'll move on to uh, the neck area we'll remove all the strings we'll have a look at the neck have a look at the frets and we'll take it from there so check the intonation there are two strings out the A string which is the fifth string it was about three cents flat on the 12th fret which I've just sorted out and then um, the high E string or the first string was about a cent out so I've sorted that out basically because both were flat we had to move the saddle towards the nut or away from the body which shortens the string uh, the string uh, length on there just a little um, on the E string quite a little bit more on the A string uh, now normally I know from memory normally go the outside bolt, the first one the outside, inside bolt, outside bolt, two on the inside bolt. But I've had to move the actual A onto the inside bolt there, which is quite rare. Yeah, I've got a mental picture in my head of how Floyd Rose is normally set in standard tuning. Now, I want to explain something else as well about Floyd Rose equipped guitars. Dave said he couldn't go with this guitar. And I'm not surprised, and the problem will be the Floyd Rose. And I've noticed that people who do not know how to set up Floyd Rose tremolos, tend not to like Floyd Rose tremolos. And I've explained to many people over the years, I've been a Floyd fan since the mid 80s, since I was introduced to them in the mid 80s. And I learned pretty quickly how to set them up. And since I know how to set them up and I know how to set a guitar up, 
I think they're fantastic. You will not get a better tremolo than a genuine Floyd Rose or maybe something like a Goto. Goto is actually my go-to brand. I prefer the Goto. Not that I prefer the Goto over the original Floyd Rose because I've had and used both even recently. I just like something about the Goto. I love Japanese gear anyway. I prefer the Goto Floyd Rose. But let me tell you one thing about Floyd Roses. Once they're set up right, and the only way to set them up right is to stretch your strings in properly. And you have to stretch all the stretch out of the strings before you lock down a Floyd Rose. And I'll tell you now, once it, the strings are stretched and the Floyd Rose is locked down, it's not going to give you any problems at all, not when it's set up properly. So I think Dave is probably not joined with his guitar because this Floyd Rose is not is set up far from properly. It is angled back and it's resting on the uh, route. So it, it's just not set up for working properly. We're going to sort that out anyway. But what I'm going to do now is because I've already set the intonation, and I know I can set up the Floyd Rose, no problem. Floyd Roses are a bit of a specialty. My, my specialties, and I don't really have, I say specialties. I'm called Fret Friend, and I, I concentrate on frets and necks because that is the most important part of the guitar. But Floyd Rose is the same, another specialty of mine. Uh, there's nothing I can't do with Floyd Rose. Uh, there's nothing I can't do with a neck or some frets. And I, these are my special areas. But saying that, there's not anything I can't do on a guitar. I'm an all-rounder. Uh, and a good guitar tech should be an all-rounder. There's only things, certain things I can't do here, and I won't do here, They're like painting and lacquering, because one, I don't have the facilities, I don't have a space, and I don't have a knowledge. It's not something I can do. If I need any paintwork or lacquer work done, I'll take it to my friend who is Luthier. He's uh, Cl Clive Eastwood from Beaver Guitars, or Belvoir Guitars. He builds guitars here in the UK. He has a spray booth and everything, and I send all my uh, paintwork and spray work to him, because he does me a good rate as someone in the business. Um, and that is my preferred method. So until I have a bigger premises and I can do that myself, that is the way it's going to stay. But anyway, that aside, Ford Rose, once it's set up proper, there's no reason not to love them. I hate they get a lot of bad press, Floyd Roses. Oh, they're rubbish, they're not rubbish. They're not rubbish at all. There's nothing rubbish about a Floyd Rose double locket system, absolutely nothing at all rubbish about them. What's rubbish? And people say the rubbish are oh, is because you don't know how to set them up. So it's not the Floyd Rose that's rubbish. It's you, the person, you are the player, who hasn't learned how to set it up. I recommend every guitarist learns at least the basic uh, rules of how to set it up, or at least learns to set their guitar up, you know, for playing. Why would you not want to do that? Why, why go and spend £50 or £60, $70 to get your guitar set up when you could do it yourself really easily? You know, and I know that might put people like me out of business. What I'm saying is at least get an idea of what you need. You know, and if you need something special doing, like some fret work and blah, 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 or a Floyd Rose setting up, fair enough. Have an idea how to do it. If you're not confident to do it yourself, that's fine. I know many people who are not confident to turn a truss rod. I have shops not far from where I live, and they send work to me. But sometimes I'll get them, they'll get me on the phone and say, which way do I turn a truss rod if I want to do this, and will it hurt it if I turn a truss rod? These are shops doing setups. I shouldn't know how to do this, you know. And you should at least have a basic idea of how your guitar works and what it needs. But anyway, less of the grumbling, um, because the more I talk, the less work I'm doing. So I'm going to crack on with this now. Now I've set the intonation anyway, I can start taking bits off the guitar. Strings are going in the bin, they've had it, they're dull and grey and horrible. Um, but then I can get on to the neck. We'll go across, we'll make sure the neck's straight. We're by going across with a not straight edge, get that on there. We'll alter the truss rod uh, to get the neck there straight. Once it's straight, we'll go across with a fret locker and we'll go and find out how many frets, if any, need work. So, unfortunately for Dave, and for me in a way, uh, this guitar needs a fret level. And there are 11 frets with high spots, 15 high spots over 11 frets. And I'll try and show you what I mean. We all know how this works. Three frets at a time, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just going to show just get the uh, not straight edge on there, make sure the neck is straight. I have already checked this, of course, I've already checked this. That neck is as straight as you can possibly get it. Take my word for that. There you go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, Six, that's five frets, six areas. Seven, eight, all the way down here, we're fine. Nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15 areas over 11 frets. I've marked them all in black marker. Areas I need to level. So it's going to be over on the uh, neck jig, over there, far side of the room. I will tape up the whole fingerboard. I'll skim across with a leveling beam. One I made myself here. Uh, a few of you have seen this before. Blah, blah, blah. This is machined flat, both edges milled flat. I have 400 grit one side, uh, 240 grit this side. 400 grit that side, I'll remove the main with the 240, then I'll smooth off with the 400. Once I've got the frets all level across the whole length, we would have flattened the frets and we need to put that crown back in, so I'll recrown the whole lot. Um, once we crowned, we have to go take it to the polishing table. Polishing table, which is, I'll go over with six different grits of sandpaper, ranging from, well, 800 grit, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000, 2500 grits of sandpaper, and I'll finish off with fine steel wool. The, the bugbear of this for me is uh, with a complete fret level and a setup, you're looking at four or five hours total, probably a little bit more, I've got floor rows to set up as well. Whereas a setup without fret leveling would have taken me two and a half hours. So it's double the amount and it's, it's, it doesn't pay a lot more. It pays a few pounds extra. You're looking at about 25 quid or $40 on top of the price. So I'm working three another two and a half, three hours for forty dollars or twenty five pounds, which really is not a lot at all. So, not the kind of job I love doing. Not that I hate it. I love my work. Don't get me wrong. And you know, I'm onto a good thing. It's just a lot more expensive for me to do a fret level than it is a setup. I would much rather do a, a an intensive setup at seventy five quid or one hundred dollars than have to do a complete fret level. Believe me. So that's it. So that is what I've got to do. I've let Dave know. Um, I'm going to crack on because I want this done for Friday. It's now Wednesday afternoon. I would like this done today. So I'm going to crack on, get the frets levelled. I will come back and give you an update shortly. So guys, I'm going to zoom in. I've actually cheated a little bit. I did something I don't normally do. And I did the fret level on this bench as the guitar was because I've got other stuff set up in the workshop. I've just done a fret level and I've got guitars all over the place. So I basically double checked that the neck was absolutely straight, went across with a fret rocker and I did the fret levelling on this bench. I didn't tape it up or anything. And um, I basically did a rough, had a rough go with the 240 grit and finished off with the 400 grit. These frets are now absolutely level. We need crowning still, but we are level along the whole length of the neck. I absolutely guarantee it because I've checked these twice. But these are beautiful now. Huh? And we've not really removed that much material. I did go across it with a fret hammer prior to leveling and just knock a few frets, some of the suspect frets, I just knocked them in, see if they'd take a bite a little bit better. Some did, most didn't. So we have gone with a complete fret level. And these are beautiful, I don't know what that bin was, it's my iPad. I'm getting messages all over Facebook at the moment. I've got so much work on at the moment, and I'll, there's quite a few I want to get done and out this week. Not that I'm rushing, but I have been working 14, 16 hour days in this workshop this week. Um, today, I came in here, what time is it? I've done about 10 hours today on and off, but I've taken it nice and steady today. Uh, I would like to think that I'm going to get this one, get the frets crowned tonight by crowning. Quick explanation. When I've leveled the frets, because they have a crown on them, when I've leveled them, they go flat and I need to put that crown back. So what we're going to do is, we're going to file the frets, file them until we get that crown back, and until just leave, we leave a bead on the top of about a quarter of a millimetre, where the strings are going to touch. The strings are going to come across my knuckles that way, for instance. We're going to put that crown back in there. Um, so basically what we do is, I would take a marker pen, for instance, I don't know how much you can see it on camera, but that puts at least a two mil line, maybe a little bit more across the top of a fret. And we need to file this black away until we leave just a bead or a thin line right down the center of that fret. So we're going from a flat fret 
to occur fret along that in that direction. That means we have minimal contact with the string and the fret. The less area we hit, the less chance we have of buzzing. And I'll do it across all of the frets. And maybe a way to explain it would be to show you a cross section of a fret. Hopefully you can see that. And they're not meant to be flat. They're meant to be curved at the end like that, like an upside, upside down D shape. So you get the idea. Anyway, I'll show a bit more of that when I crack on. I've got to move on because I have much to do. So I will get this neck taped up and then we'll look at doing the crowning. I will come and show you the crowning uh, when I get toward the end of the job. So this neck, I finished profiling the frets last night. They are all now profiled and waiting for a polish. So they are now going over to a polishing bench where I will polish with six grits of sandpaper going from 800 through to 2500. So grits I will be using will be 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000 and 2500 grits of sandpaper. Uh, we'll be getting all of those uh, lines and scratches out of them, polish them to a high polish and we will do the final polish with uh, finest grade super fine steel wool. So I know some people go ooh ha about using steel wool. Let me tell you, steel wool brings these out absolutely beautiful. They say, oh, it's only equivalent to 600 grit. It might be equivalent to 600 grit, but it ain't because it brings it out to a fine, fine polish. The thing with steel wool, it's not as much an abrasive as it as it as a polisher because it just disintegrates anyway. It's not gonna it's not gonna cause scratches, it's gonna polish. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. And I love using steel wool when I'm finishing off frets. So I'm gonna get these over to the other bench, just over that way there. I'll stick this in the vise, get it all uh, padded up and clamped in nice and tight. I'll first go across 800 grit, I'll smooth the edges of the bevels and I'll just go round all the bevels off with 800 grit. Uh, whatever's left of the 800 then I'll polish it, I'll give the frets the first polish and I'll just polish all of the frets. Always round the bevels as well, just so they're nice and smooth when you play them. Once that's done, we can get this back on the guitar and we can go and get it set up. So, stay tuned, I will come back and show the progress. Uh, as there is something to show. So I, I apologise for the light in here, but it's getting late and um, we're now at the stage where we're polishing the frets and I've already been across with five grits of paper which are all screwed up and chucked down here out of the way because it's done, that paper is spent. I have one more grit to do, 2,500, blah 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 blah. It's just a matter of, I show this so many times, just going across top of the fret and getting into the corners just to remove the scratches not only will it put a shine on the frets especially when I do a final polish with steel wool but this is removing all the scratches we put in earlier and now moving across to the next one going up the side over the top and onto the other side then moving on to the next one I'll do this for all of the frets just move on to the third one same scenario sort of gradually moving across the paper so we get a bit of abrasion on there. And as a rule, I do about seven, eight frets in one section. Seven, eight frets here, seven, eight frets in the middle, seven, eight frets at the other end of the paper. And it's a long-winded process, this. Right into the corner, right over the top. Go with six grits and with steel wool. But we're getting to the, right at the business end now, we're nearly done. I'm going to carry on, get the rest of them done with this. Once it's done, I'll move on to steel wool. The steel wool will really make these shine. Um, I just wanted to add this little bit of video because it's getting dark now. I wish I was done now, but I'm not. It's about 7.30 at night. I'm really tired. I've had a long week. I've worked long hours this week. Uh, but I need to get this. I want this one done for morning because it's going out tomorrow morning about 9 o'clock. So I've got to be done with So get this polishing done. I can get this guitar set up tonight. It will be ready for the morning. Uh, I don't want to rush anything, and it'll be worth doing, I'll be pleased with myself if we get this done, so I'm going to crack on, and I'll come back with a final update tomorrow. I know the light's not great in here, but I just wanted to show the frets before I put the neck back on the guitar. These frets have all been levelled, uh, been polished, I've just removed the tape, and what I need to do now is I'm just going to mineral oil the fingerboard, get that cleaned up. I think you'll agree with the frets look absolutely fantastic. Frets on now, all level. They look absolutely beautiful. The glass light, they're super smooth. Uh, I pride myself on my fret work. I would do. It's one I call fret friend. So I just wanted to show that. Um, 
before I finish for the night. I have to put the neck back on the guitar, get some strings on, set up with Floyd Rose and get it set up. I could do it now. I'm really tired, I can't be bothered, so I think I'm going to get up early in the morning. I'll get up at 6 in the morning, um, give me, that'll give me 3 hours to get this done. I don't need an hour and a half, so I'm going to do it in the morning. So that is it, I'm knocked off for the night. It is around, I don't know what time it is, 8.30ish p.m. I've been in here since 8 o'clock this morning. I've had enough, I've had a long busy day, I've had a really busy week. So that is it, so come back tomorrow, we'll get the neck back on the body, blah, 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 blah. I left the tape on in case I uh, mineral oil the neck while it's on the guitar. Don't want to get any oil on the body itself because we'll stain it a little bit. Probably do it, I'll probably do it overnight anyway. I'll probably spray out the mineral oil now and let that get in. I'll put the neck on first thing in the morning. So tune back in in the morning. All right, good morning for it, friends. It is just past 6.30 in the morning. I've been in, in this workshop for just over 30 minutes. In fact, I've been here since just before 6 a.m. And um, I'm going to show something in the final setting up of this Floyd Rose on this uh, Ibanez E-Gen 8 or E-G-E-N 8. It's some kind of signature model, I forget the guy, I've never heard of him before. But anyway, that's not important. So, I just want to explain. It's imperative that when you do the final setting up on Floyd Rose that you get this bridge plate absolutely horizontal. And no matter how you do it, in this case, I've just stuck a stack of business cards under there just to trap underneath this area to get it straight. And once it is horizontal with the body, tighten up these springs. Not as far as you want to go, in this case I had to. But you don't have to do it that far, but do it tight enough so no matter what you do, when you're tuning the guitar, there's never going to be enough pull on the strings to pull it back out of tune to pull the bridge up this way. That way, when you tune in the guitar, that like guitar is tuned in, tuned in there. I've locked down the locking us. We are absolutely in tune. And what's going to happen when I remove these business cards is the bridge is going to drop backwards and it's going to pull tighter because of the springs. And how we set the final tuning is we then loosen this claw. We loosen the springs until we get it back horizontal. Once we've got it close to horizontal, we start testing the A string. We have a tuner plugged in. And we'll keep altering the screws, we'll alter them at the same time. We don't want it, we don't want a claw like that, we want it perfectly straight. Once the A string is in tune, all the others should be in tune. And that's how we set uh, the tremolo, or set the floating position of the tremolo. But it is absolutely imperative that you get it absolutely straight and blocked so it's not going to move and tighten the springs up more. I get a lot of questions on my Floyd Rose setup. Uh, video saying, oh, how do I keep it straight or blah blah, or it, 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 once I take the spring, once I take the business cards or whatever, whether you block it from underneath with a block of wood or whatever, so it just, it's just out of tune again. Well, you've got to you've got to make sure it's horizontal and get the springs tighter. Once you you remove these, I'm going to remove them now actually, just to show you. There we go. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it from where you are. Just got a screwdriver in there. I'm going to remove the business cards, and you're not going to see it because I haven't got three hands. No longer is. Remove a stack of business cards from underneath. And the tremolo is still just about horizontal. This is why Dave would have had problems with his tremolo. There's probably not enough pull on these springs. So hopefully that has gone a little bit sharp. I'm not going to plug it in. I do have it on. Need some Here we go. Hopefully these strings are now all gone sharp because the spring pull I'm going to try and load more than it was. Yes, that's beautiful. So we're now tuned into F so, F. so what I need to do is I'm going to loosen these this claw at the back until we get this back in tune. Once it's back in tune, that is it, we are done. Where is my uh, good screwdriver for this? So I'm going to loosen. Claw springs, keeping them horizontal, and I'll just keep checking this A string. And we're getting close.
that your tyre is perfectly in tune. And what I've done is, I'm going to show you, I've released the claw, loosened the claw springs, released the claw, keeping it horizontal all the time, or keeping it level all the time. And I've released that about four millimetres. Once this A string was in tune, all the others dropped right back in tune. So now we have a, tre a tremolo, double locking floating tremolo, absolutely in tune and absolutely floating dead straight. That guitar is now tuned in, it's ready to play. Perfect, all in tune now. Let's put the back plate on and uh, this guitar is ready to go back to Dave this morning. So I'm just going to get back plate on like I said and I will come back, show the guitar, do a little bit more exploration and that will be that. And that is this guitar all finished. Look at that. What an absolute beauty. I don't know anything about this guitar, I just went and looked online, it's some kind of signature guitar. On the back it says EGEN8. EGEN8, EGEN8, I don't know, no idea. Some signature, I can't remember the guy's signature, never heard of a guy before, so I don't know what signature is, but what an absolutely beautiful guitar. These retail, it's about it's about 650 pounds, 650 English pounds is about 900 US dollars. So it's a nice guitar. It's actually a guitar I actually do like the gold hardware on for once. It looks great, plays fantastic. Uh, it is now perfectly set up. Got all the back plates back on. Dave bought me this one in because he hadn't gelled with it. His wife bought him this. It's an expert, it's not a cheap guitar. But he hadn't gelled with it. But the reason he hadn't gelled with it, I know the floor rose, because the floor rose wasn't set up right anyway, it was sunk into the body, leaning right back. And I've always found this with people who not so much people who, exactly, who can't set up Floyd Roses, but a lot of people, but Floyd Roses gets a lot of flack, normally only by people who don't like to set them up, in my experience. I've already explained this earlier in the video. And that truly is the case, I've, I've found that. I learned to set Floyds up pretty early. And I came across Floyd Rose, Floyd Rose Tremolos, double locking Tremolos, early 80s, round about the same time, I discovered Hamer Guitars. We had a shop in Nottingham called Folds, Folds Music Shop, and they started that building and selling pianos way back in the 1800s, maybe even before that. And the first time I saw a Hamer guitar, there were three or four or five of them hanging on the wall downstairs. They had a shop front on the street in Nottingham and they had a basement area with a load of guitars and amps and everything. You can go and try things out, look around. And I was always in there as a young punk rocker before I started my band Concrete Socks. And they used to let me plug in and try the distortion boxes and the cheap guitars. And I, I couldn't even play guitar that well at the time. But they always let me in there and play about. And I saw these Hamers and I thought, they're amazing. Didn't really know much about them, but I looked at them and the prices were about £700 back then and I thought I'll never be able to afford one of them. Well, eventually I was able to afford a couple of those, but that is another story for another time. But yeah, so um, what can I tell you? So this guitar, it's a really, really good guitar. I think Dave is going to like this now. If he doesn't gel with it now, he never is going to. The Floyd Rose is set up bang on, it's perfectly floating as I've just shown in the previous part. The action, I've got the action nice and low, 1.75mm, just between 1.75 and 2mm on the low E, 1.5mm on the high E. This is the, 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 the height above, above the 12th fret. It's always kind of my recommended uh, setting. Uh, around about 1.8mm on the low E, above the 12th fret and about 1.5 millimeters above the high E. Uh, always works for me, little bit of relief. Um, the guitar plays absolutely beautiful, it looks wonderful. And I hope David's gonna be happy. So that is this one wrapped up. It is just getting on, coming up to 7 a.m. Uh, on this Friday morning. I have had an amazing week this week. I've done all the guitars I wanted to do. One, two, three. Well, I've got five guitars finished this week, which has been a very productive week for me. I don't normally do that many, but then again, I normally do refrets. So I've had no refrets this week. I've had a couple of fret levels. Oh, this one was a fret level. Uh, it's had a fret level, complete setup, uh, complete overhaul. Everything's been checked, loosened, and retightened. The electrics have been checked. Um, everything, every screw, every nut and bolt. I've altered the height of a couple of the pickups. I've lowered the middle pickup, heightened the neck and bridge pickup just a little. The frets look amazing. They, they look brand new. So that's great. So Dave, I'm sure Dave's going to be happy with this. Um, so I'm going to wrap this one up. So fret friends, uh, keep checking my website. Best place to get me 
is Facebook, facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. That's facebook.com forward slash N-G-1-7. You can check my prices, you can check my work, you can check my reviews. Uh, I think my reviews are something like 9.4 out of 10. And the only ones I didn't get a top review were by people who were lying and left me a one-star review a few years ago. Uh, so I won't worry about that. Um, so yeah, my reviews, my reviews are very good. All of my videos go on that page as well. I video every guitar that comes in here, start to finish, uh, so you get an idea of what work you've had done. Blah 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 blah. My other webpage, fretfriend.co.uk. There's not really anything on there. It's just a front holding page. I'll get around to building that one day. I own the domain for five years minimum anyway, so maybe I'll get around to that. But facebook.com forward slash n g o n e s e v e n. This is me, Victor Christian, your fret friend. Signing off, and as always, I will sign off by saying, be good to each other, and I'll see you soon.